And although we all await their predictions every year, mm -hmm. there's a reminder here. Groundhogs are not actual meteorologists, but they are really darn cute. They are <laughs> adorable, right? <laughs> but the work of real weather scientists is being honored in a unique new exhibit at Cartersville Telescience Museum. And that's where Good Day Atlanta's Paul Milliken is live for us this morning. And Paul, you're peeking inside Noah's Ark. But Noah's not not Ark. Noah. Yes, indeed. Okay. Different Noah. Uh, not the biblical one. Right. No, that is, right. this is a different Noah. This mm -hmm. is the Noah of the weather radio. So Joanne Feldman, mm -hmm. look, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm but not that are. kind of person. You know, I would <laughs> never do that. But do not. you know what an Alvin's Draftsman brush is? Okay. This is very important. For I've, I, I, I've got to be uh, completely honest with you. Full disclosure, <laughs> when you brought that up before the break, I ran to Google because I wanted the right answer. And even after Googling <laughs> Did you even it, find it? I know what the brush no, is no. now, but I don't know how this is going to relate to anything you're about to tell me. So I'm stumped. It was way before. Okay, well, this, yeah. goes, this goes <laughs> way before. Yeah, this goes back a, a few years, long before we had computers and computer models. You know, you would have to actually draw the weather charts and the maps. And so this is one of the brushes. And it just brushed away all the material without smudging your work. So, you know, you would draw it with pencil and stuff like that. And you'd get these little shavings. And then you brush it away so that you don't smear your weather charts. I can't believe you didn't know that, Joanne. Don't they hey, teach that in I, meteorology? Hey, honestly, Paul, I thought it was going to have something to do. I thought it was going to have something to do with like the bristles changing shape related to the humidity or something <laughs> no, no, like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, oh, you were, cool. you were thinking very scientific. No, 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 no. We got to, we got to <laughs> dial that back a little bit. Yeah. Well, that is one of the many interesting things you'll learn here in the treasures of Noah's Ark. Amy is standing by. This is really a neat exhibit because everyone has heard of NOAA, the National Oceanic and, and uh, Atmospheric Administration, but not everybody really knows what NOAA is or what they do. And the whole purpose of this exhibit is to let us know, right? Right. Yeah, it, it highlights some of the services and science that they do around the United States. Yeah, and of course, some of the most famous, of course, the National Weather Service and, of course, their work in tracking oceans and the ocean currents. So let's talk about the weather stuff in this case. This is a very cool historical document. What is this showing us here? So this is a document of meteorolog meteorological observations in January, starting in 1864 up to 1899, I believe. And this is Atlanta. This is local data. This is local data data that recorded the annual mean of temperature for the month of January. Wow. So as you see there, January 1864, the mean temperature was 42.8 degrees, and it kind of varies from there as you look down the years. I love that. Very cool. And then there's just neat little instruments like the clinometer over there. What did that do? So that was uh, a device that they used to project light onto clouds at, at nighttime so they could see the distance. Oh. And, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, like the, the cloud the, heights yeah, and stuff. Cloud, That's yeah, very yeah. cool. I like that. And Joanne, you'll like this too. So there's a teletype right here from 1979. And the oh, funny wow. thing is, of course, we don't get weather data via teletype. But doesn't it look like it, it still looks the same on the computer, right? Like the yes, format the hasn't print, changed the format, at all. You're right. Exactly. The font, everything is exactly the same today, but we get it on the computer, not the teletype. Now, let's move over to oceans for a minute. These drift bottles are very cool, too. So we all, all heard about message in a bottle, but there's a real thing of releasing bottles into the ocean, right? Yeah, they released these bottles to help uh, give them information about currents and where they would land eventually. Wow, so what's inside the bottle? Um, most of the bottles have like a little postcard that they ask where, if someone found it on land, that they provide that information where they found it and provide it back to NOAA so they have that information. Wow, I love that. And you said before there's kind of a funny statistic because, you know, people not necessarily always very motivated. So, like, when these drift bottles were released, they didn't all come back, right? Oh, no. They uh, said in one of their records that uh, for two years that they released things, they only received about 9% yeah, back. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. You know what? People are very lazy, but hopefully if we ever find one, we'll do better. But neat to see those, too, and how fun would that be to find one floating out there in the ocean. Again, Treasures of Noah's Ark. What a very cool exhibit. How long is this here? This is here through October of this year. Amazing. Well, great to see you, Amy. Thank you for showing us around. And we just showed you a few artifacts of many. There's, you know, whole displays about weather satellites, which you see here and all kinds of different tools. Again, Joanne, maybe, okay, I'm, I'm disappointed that you didn't know what the Alvin's <laughs> Draftsman brush, I had to read it again, the Alvin's Draftsman <laughs> oh, brush so was. You didn't know but I know you know yeah. what these are over <laughs> here. I know you know. Oh, I totally knew. 
I have many of them because I started forecasting in 1784. <laughs> but look at these tools. Now, you know these tools, of course, the psychrometer, the mm -hmm. anemometer, all of those things that we, we still cool. use. They may not look the same, but they're all things out there that are still in use today. It's really interesting. That is so cool. I've learned a lot here in just this last few minutes. <laughs> you know i got to make a trip to Carpenter. I'm going to buy you an Alvin's Draftsman brush for Christmas. <laughs> you're so, you're too oh. kind, Paul. Way too, <laughs> that, that's too much, really, honestly. <laughs> you shouldn't, Paul. <laughs> back. Really it's okay. It's too much. No, that is very cool, much, though, Paul. Thank you so much. And the TELUS Science Museum is located at 100 TELUS Drive in Cartersville. That is right off of I-75 at exit 293. And the museum is open daily from 10 to 5. Admission is $17 for adults, 13 for children ages 3 to 17.